you'll notice I've got a bit, well, I've got a fair bit done on Goldie. I have been crooked, but I felt like doing stuff, but I couldn't talk. Um, due to the flu and, yeah, I couldn't say three words without coughing, so... Um, so some of the restoration's been missed a little bit, but, um, but it's been two weeks since we've been um, since we did a video on it. But <coughs> I mean, I still I still have the cough bit happening a little bit, but we we're gonna soldier on with it. But look, you'll see the back end here is um, is open, and I painted the tractor, and then it's always had quite a bit of movement up on the top here. And looks like, and I, I was aware of it, um, that the where your top link goes on here, um, there's, there's a couple of bolts. I'll just pop one in there just to give you the idea. A couple of bolts sit in there, and then this is where your top arm goes. And this has always had some movement in it, quite a bit. And because I've never worried about it, because I'm not going to, it's not a ploughing tractor, it's just a, it's a street parade tractor and all that. I've, look, I've seen the movement there and it's, it's been about an inch or so, and I haven't worried about it. But I thought I'd have a bit of a look after I painted it of all things. But anyway, that's how my brain works sometimes. And what's happened is in the past, someone's had trouble with it and we have, there's a screw in thread there that, and that thread, this is a new part I have here. That thread screws in there and that, that's actually some of your adjustment. And you don't see that because it's behind a, a little rubber here. But what's happened in the past is someone's been in there having a fiddle and behind that nut there, there's just a washer. And I thought, oh, well, with a carry-all on the back of a tractor bouncing around, that's no good. So what it's supposed to have is this whole assembly here and this spring set up. And this goes all the way in there. And there actually should be a mechanism in there to work the draft so that so that when your plough digs in, um, the force pushes forward against this spring and compresses this spring, and that pushes a little lever inside there, and then that moves your hydraulic control valve. We don't need to fix all that, um, just because this isn't a ploughing tractor. It's going to go do street parades with that carry all on it. And, it's just going to do, do displays and things like that. So the, it's not a ploughing tractor. We're not going to take it and get it all dirty. But I didn't want this set up up here banging back and forth. I thought if I, I thought with this just hammering every time you hit a bump, there was a fair chance that something would get damaged or it would hammer on the thread here and, and muck things up. So, so what, we, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set this whole setup up just with the spring and the idea is to make this top link not hammer and we can adjust that with the big nut here and um, just take any movement out so it's nice and snug we'll put a new rubber here to keep any moisture out and um, we should be able to take all the movement out of there and then when I'm driving along if we do hit a bit of a bump or something like that we have, even though this is a strong spring, we have a little bit of compression here. So we're not going, we're not aiming to squash this spring up with adjustment. We're just aiming to take the slop out of the top and use this as a shock absorber. So follow along. We'll um, we'll see how we go. Now um, the front axle part of the video, I actually put a grease nipple in and just popped that pin in, and that was all to do with all I really needed to do with that. So um, so anyway, I'll get organized and we'll put all this in. Now in the, in the kit for all this, we actually get a new pivot and 
the, the new the whole lot. But look, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to take that back to work and we're going to put that into stock. Someone might need that. There's, there's nothing physically wrong with my old one in that regard. And, and it's all painted up and everything. And by the time it sits in there, I'll have a little bit of touch up to do and that'll be it. It'll look okay. So we're going to use the old pivot. And we'll, we'll go from there. I might put a torch down here and have a look, show you down the hole here if I can. Okay, that's a that's a pretty poor picture of what's down in there. I can't get the torch here with the camera there too. Okay, now you see that you got the big hole. Then you see the round bit. Let's see if I can reorganise myself some here. Down in this corner. You'll see that little round pin. Now that little pin, that is what the spring pushes against to get the draft going. So that's all down there. Um, but anyway, we'll set the spring up and go forward with that, I think. Well, when we take the plunger and push it down against that pin, That's how the draft control works. So once the load from your plough pushes forward on there, that pushes there and that's springing there. That's a lever down on the control valve and there's another spring up in the top. So, so anyway, not that we're going to worry too much about that, I just thought I'd show it to you. Okay, this is our old housing. First up we put the boot on and then the, the adjusting nut that goes up through here. He screws in like that, it has to sit down over. Now we don't hook it into the rubber just yet. Then the spring goes on and locates on the shoulder here. And then this piece goes down the centre there and we screw him up a little bit. Now, this actually has a, a, yeah, it has a cross slot in it um, so you can get a screwdriver up there and also there's a little hole in through there where we can lock that with a pin. So I'll assemble this bit and we'll get ready to poke him in. Okay, let me show you something. The thread in this genuine part is three quarter UNF. And that's fine, the, the old bolt's three quarter UNF. Now, This thread here and this thread here are nothing like each other. So I've been wondering why I've been cleaning up the thread on the top here and this piece doesn't want to screw in. Well, it can't screw in in a fit. So it looks like what we're going to have to do now is use the aftermarket yoke as well. Which is a bit of a pain in the bum, means I've got to paint a few things. And... So I'll just grab this thread and make sure. That's how it's supposed to be. So there you go, there's a bloody trick. Trick, pain in the ass. But anyway, but you can see that that adjustment comes down. And with these holes here, yeah, once you've got it adjusted right, you can pop a split pin in and hold it there. That's if I can keep the bloody, keep it in the camera probably for you. So there you go, it looks like I have to have a bit of a change of plan here. Um, look, it's no big deal, it's just something that I wasn't planning on doing. So by the time all this sits in here and this will be grey, I'll have to touch up the paint all around there. and, and 
yeah, mask everything off and do a bit of a fiddle. <laughs> Not to worry. I should have probably thought to do it before I got it all assembled, but anyway, I, I didn't. Um, well, I had some nice fine days and that I, I used home to blow a bit of paint around. And now I've knocked half of it off. Right, I've assembled this bit here and I'm just going to put a bolt in just to stop it falling around and I'll try and get this nut started actually that bolts more in the road than anything Let's put some never sees in there. So we'll make sure we have some never sees. I like that never sees. doing this back to the front and we can probably get this in a lot easier. Anyway. So what I'm aiming for here is as much thread as I can get. So I'm taking this thread in until the rubber here or the groove for the rubber is pretty well right in. So we still have a fair bit of movement there, which that's okay. I'm just screw here to um, take the end movement out. I'll go and find a longer screwdriver. I'll just try and tap this around a little bit too just to make sure that that's in tight. Tighten this up, the sloppier that will become. So, I need to take this outer nut up, and we're going to have to find a happy medium between these two. Oh, 
to try another angle from this. See that spring slopping around in there? I should be able to get this nut tight enough to just come up hard on that spring. So if you keep centralising it and turning it, we might have a win. I have used the proper C spanner for here and you can nip him up, but we just put them along here a little bit. So you don't follow this as best practice. There's nothing like best practice. Alright, I'll have a fiddle with this. When I reckon I've got it right, I'll come back. Right, I've bumped this around just by there, FBH, and there's no end movement in that spring at all, but it's not tied in the ball. So I feel we're just starting to come barely up onto compression there, so what I'd like to try is if we And we're looking for no movement. This has to come and centralise in the spring and get no movement. So. Like I say, this isn't how it's supposed to be done. It's just a bit of an afterthought I had after looking at it and thinking, well, that won't work how it was. Oh, well, it won't work long. I didn't want it breaking down out in the road. Just lovely. So we don't have any movement. Oh, yes, we do. So we'll have to then from memory if I screw this right up it should get sloppier. Should be able to come back out until it's until the movement's gone. And that'll give me a little bit of spring loading on my top link. I might go the other way, eh? Okay, try and keep up, please. Okay, leave me play. Well, here we are back again. Due to the wonders of modern technology, 
This is the old one. And I took it out and I've got a little shadow there, I need to touch the paint up on it, but I did take it out and give it a bit of a quick paint. I felt it would be easier than trying to get um, overspray everywhere. I've got a nice solid feel there now. Now, there's room for a split pin to come through, so I'll just, just turn this a little. Now that's the split pin go through, and we'll look with the split pin in there, um, that takes away any chance that it can unscrew inside there, and this will drop off. It's it just won't be able to do it. So I'll need to give that a bit of a bit of a tuner. sits down deeper. And we'll just spread the spread the outer a little. Okay. So there's a little bit of side movement, but there's no back and forth. So that's that's a good thing. Now with the with the pivots here, I'm using the old ones again. I just like old original parts rather than some of the new stuff. But yeah, I wish I had a look at this before, but I, I rushed myself a little bit trying to get it painted because we thought there was a bit of a weather change and then, oh, then I had to go on it the flu as well. So you've got to have all the good things in life, eh? The flu and things. If we're going to plough with this tractor, we'd get all fussy here. So we're just not doing that. That's the proper tool for hitting an Allen key, a three-quarter spanner. <laughs> Where I dropped the setup before, I chipped the paint, so I've had to touch that up as well. So, not to worry. At the moment, it's actually blowing a gale outside. It's just um, this afternoon. It's um, yeah, really got stuck into it. in through the side here and that locks that big nut from unscrewing on us as well so I'll have to find it right now here's the original top link pin it goes through no worries and then this fella here no not him the one on the other side go through there so that's nice but um, where the old housing has a couple of holes here for the chains to go through um, to hold the pins this new housing doesn't have that so 
we'll have to measure this up and pop those fellas in. And I might even tidy this pin up and um, get all that paint off it. Make it look like someone loves it. And this little bit of chain here will we'll get that out and we'll drill a hole in there. But for the moment, that'll do this job. That's that's job well done. That's that's what I wanted. Um, we now have the spring set up in there to help with um, any shock loading on the carry-all or whatever whatever weight we have, the spring will actually help us.